Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be doing a review of Sharps by KJ Parker. This is the second KJ Parker book that I've read now. I've actually read two books in pretty close succession, which is a really great sign because he is very quickly becoming a new favourite author of mine. And I really enjoyed Sharps. I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed The Folding Knife, but I think it's another really strong book by KJ Parker. So I'm just going to quickly read the blurb of Sharps. For the first time in nearly 40 years, an uneasy truce has been called between two neighbouring kingdoms. The war has been long and brutal, fought over the usual things, resources, land, money. Now there is peace. Diplomatic talks have begun and with them, the games. Two teams of fences represent their nations at this pivotal moment. When the future of the world lies balanced on the point of a rapier, one misstep could mean ruin for all. Human nature being what it is, does peace really have a chance? So it's a really, it's a book that's set amongst a lot of political intrigue. There's a lot of like kind of historical context of the world. And the thing I really like about it is, is that it's set in the same world as The Folding Knife. So there's a lot of familiar terminology. You know, you get kind of mentions of certain things from The Folding Knife and it's really cool. And I really enjoyed that uh, this book was set in the same world. I believe a lot of his other standard are also set in the same world as well, which I really like. And I like the fact that it's this kind of really broad, expansive universe. And it's set on this kind of backdrop of political intrigue and two kingdoms fighting each other, but peace is extremely fragile and anything at any point could tip it over. So let's just jump right in. What I'll do is talk about what I really liked about it as normal. And then I'll go into what I had issues with and what you might have issues with as a reader. So what I liked about it, the last hundred pages of this book are insane. They're slightly chaotic, but in a great way. And the pacing is just through the roof. Everything kind of came together. One downside of this book, I would argue is, and I'll get to this in a second, is, is that the beginning is really strong and then it kind of goes a little bit slow and then it's kind of like a rocket ship and it just goes crazy. That felt a little bit off for me, but those last 100 pages were really strong and you, you saw how all of the different elements and all of the different characters play a role. And when you get to the ending, it all makes sense. You know, it, this isn't a book where you'll know what's happening every step of the way. I remember for the first half, I really didn't have a clue. But as you as you go through that last part of the book, you really kind of see that KJ Parker had a long game here. And it's really cool to see that revealed. The second thing I really enjoyed was the characters. The character work in this book, I don't think is as good as The Folding Knife. And that's mainly because you are following multiple perspectives, quite a few different perspectives as well. There's a lot going on in different parts of the world. I think the characters in general were, were pretty good. One of my downsides or one of the things that I didn't like as much was how some of the characters weren't as fleshed out, but I'll get to that in a second. But I really liked Addo, Suidas, Franzis, Girot, Simazis, and the Abbots, Simitus. Simitus, I think. I don't know if I pronounced that right. All of those characters had really interesting arcs and really interesting backgrounds. Suidas was one of my favourite. It's really interesting, his character. He is definitely experiencing PTSD from the war. So this is set after this kind of big war that happened. And Suidas was caught right in the middle of that war. And there's kind of one specific battle that happens that he kind of becomes synonymous with. It's really interesting seeing his characterization throughout the duration of the book, because at first you kind of, I don't know, he feels quite surface level, but as you get deeper into his psyche, he still lives through experiences from the war. It's really interesting. I and mean, I really like the fact that he was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And it was really obvious as the reader and you can't help but feel incredibly empathetic towards him because he is a product of a war that he had no hand in starting. It gives a really brutal look into what war can do to just normal people. You know, they're not they're not the people moving the chess pieces, they're just normal people caught in a battle and you see the impact that it has on him psychologically. And I really like that and I've, I think it was done really well. The other character that I will also mention was Addo. So Addo has a really interesting arc. I'm not going to go into spoilers because I do want this to be spoiler free, but Addo has a really interesting arc. He kind of starts off as this kind of nondescript character at the start and then he plays a really critical role throughout the book, especially in those last hundred pages. And I think it was really well done. At first I was kind of like, huh, 
do I buy into this? And then when I really thought about it, I really did buy into it. I really bought into his motivations and why he was doing the things that he was doing and why he was saying the things that he was saying. And I, I think Addo is somebody that quite a lot of people can probably identify with. He's, you know, the son of a very famous commander and he's it's that kind of typical father-son trope of will the son live up to the father's expectations and the expectations of society on him because he is the son of his father. He has other brothers as well, but he is the youngest and so nobody really expects any of anything from him. And yet he plays one of the most critical roles in the book in progressing the plot forward. And I really enjoyed that. The third character I will also mention is the abbot. Uh, I think it's Simitus. So he is, it's really interesting Simitus. Simitus is kind of behind the scenes. He is, you know, he's, he's a part of this kind of religious group and he's just there doing his thing. And you're, you're kind of wondering what is he doing and why is he doing it? And it's just, it's really cool to watch. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Bias from the First World Trilogy. He's just kind of maneuvering things around and he's super smart and he's super like switched on. He is the person who's kind of pulling some of the levers. And I really like that when you have a character who kind of comes across as not being, you know, necessarily physically strong, but they're like just mentally superior to everybody else. And the Abbot definitely represents that. So I really like that too. The other thing I really enjoyed were the undertones of this book. There are kind of side discussions about racism and misogyny, and I thought it was done in a really good way. That being said, I think the misogyny aspect in particular is an interesting one because there is one female character whose POV we get, and I don't think she's fleshed out very well. And I was actually quite frustrated that she wasn't fleshed out very well. I think I realized that if you want to read strong female characters, KJ Parker is not necessarily going to be the person that I go to read strong female characters. I will leave that to Adrian Selby or to an extent Joe Abercrombie and even Brandon Sanderson. I don't think KJ Parker is necessarily going to be known for his female characters and I think that's fine but just be aware going into it that the one female character that we get you know a lot of insights into, she's very surface level, she doesn't feel that fleshed out and I didn't really like the way that she was characterized, to be perfectly honest. Um, she kind of came across as this really snarky, really rude, not very nice person. And I just felt like, you know, you didn't have to make her like the horrible person of the group. She could have been given other redeeming qualities that would have made her more compelling as a character. So while there was an undertone of talking about kind of misogyny and uh, looking at women as second class citizens, and there is plenty of that. I did really find it interesting. I do feel like he could have done a much better job at characterizing her. I don't actually know how to pronounce her name, so I'm not gonna try and butcher it. I will actually just put the name in text here. I think it's Isiot. I, I don't know, but I probably butchered it. So bear that in mind. But yeah, she could have definitely been more fleshed out. Um, but I did really like the, the undertones of, of colonialism as well and imperialism and the impact that that has on societies. And I think that's something that Parker does incredibly well. He kind of brings these elements in, in a really subtle way and it doesn't feel like it's in your face, but it's there. And if you want to think about it, you can think about it. And that brings me to another thing that I really like about Keiji Parker. And I think a thing that he does exceptionally well that I've not seen anybody else do even remotely as good as he does. And that is how he weaves together kind of politics and economics and engineering into this story. So The Folding Knife has a lot of economics and political intrigue, but there is an additional layer here in this book where he goes into a lot of the mechanics and the engineering of how certain things work. So as an example, there's one part where, you know, they're in a cart and the cart breaks down. And then there's pages talking about how they fix the cart. And it's really fascinating to me because I am, generally quite interested in in how things are built you know i've mentioned before that i'm a very curious person so i always like to know these sorts of things because that's just who i am i'm always that person asking why or how I like the way that again he seamlessly includes it into the story without it feeling like it's just tacked on and it's just there randomly it belongs there and it adds to the story and i really like it in terms of what i didn't like so i've, I've kind of mentioned these both but i'll just quickly go over them again and that was the pacing the pacing was was off for me a little bit 
I think the beginning started really strong and then as you go into the kind of middle part of the book it kind of felt a little bit aimless that being said with the ending it's entirely justified but it can feel aimless as you're going through it and I do think you have to be in a very specific mood to read this type of book thankfully I was in the mood so bear that in mind that the pacing isn't entirely consistent throughout but I think it's okay upon reflection the other thing is what I mentioned is, is that some of the characters felt less fleshed out Isiot butchered her name she is definitely one of them there's another character called Simises he is kind of this el elusive character who we don't really get much context on but he is following the group throughout the journey to get to the fencing competition and he kind of disappears here and there and you're kind of like where is he going I feel like we should have got more time with him we do get more time with him towards the end of the book I just wish that had happened sooner and I would have liked to have learned more about his character motivations and why he was doing what he was doing i feel like that could have been fleshed out more so those were the only two things that i didn't really like but and other people might have issue with again if you don't really like deep diving into economic political systems or learning about how you know you would mend a cart don't read this book because these books do read somewhat academic i don't mind it i actually really enjoy it but i do have to be in a very specific mood and if you are not into that just i would just steer clear away from kj parker he's not for everyone he's very much an acquired taste but if you do like that stuff then you will definitely enjoy this book so overall i gave this book a four stars i was debating giving it a 4.25 and i'm still kind of on the fence but for me the folding knife is still very much my favorite book of kj parker's I am going to be reading The Hammer with Alan and Gregory, which I'm really excited for. And I'm, I'm just really excited to read more of his books and to get through his standalones. I also purchased a couple of other of his other books. So I'm just slowly going to make my way through his publications because he's written a lot of books. And I just, again, I don't feel like they get much love. And he's such a good author. And I, I think he needs to, to get more attention, especially on BookTube. There you have it, folks. Those are my thoughts on Sharps by KJ Parker. I do really recommend this book, but again, be aware of those couple of things that I mentioned. And like I said, it's not for everyone. So if you do read it and you don't like it, it's not the end of the world. If you have read it, let me know because I'd be really curious to hear what you thought about that ending in particular and which character was your favourite. Uh, but otherwise, I will see you in the next video, folks. Take care, stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.